Freshman John Tyrone of Hutch Tech slides one in for the game's first goal. Second period, uh, Tech's Brett Berry centering pass. That's Keith Gurek all alone. He shoots and scores, and Hutch Tech wins it 2-1. They win the series two games to one. The engineers advance back. And McKinley. As we go to the coaches' file, I'm Jay Moran along with Rob Lucas. Thank you, Jay. We'll look at the coaches now as we look at uh, Hutch Tech and their head coach, Bob Westfall. There you see some of the statistics about Bob. You are very familiar with him. Uh, he's a McKinley High School, high school graduate, and uh, pretty simply, he's one of the better coaches and better well-known coaches in western New York. Some of his hobby, hobbies, boating, all, spo all other sports, and he played hockey and baseball at McKinley High School. That is, uh, actually, that is uh, Bob Westfall. And now if we go over to the uh, McKinley side, and we will look at uh, Bill Klein. The coach's file for Bill Klein as uh, Bill Klein behind the bench for 11 years now. A record of 223, 49, and 17. And you can't argue with that. We had some of our graphics a little messed up there. But uh, the coaches, if you watch Explore League Hockey, you are very familiar with both of these guys, and we're ready to go. And these two teams very familiar with each other. They played six times already this year. McKinley coming out as the victor each and every time. McKinley Screaming Eagles in the orange jerseys and Hutch Tech in the blue and red and Hutch Tech with the puck in the own zone as Brent Ferry takes it behind his own net starting goalies Justin Tata for Hutch Tech and Dave Bain for McKinley. Hutch Tech struggling just to get it out of their own zone as we start play here early action as they break into the Hutch Tech zone shot on net there by Willie Sobalski goes wide goes back to the point kept in very nicely by Moran as they battle along the boards, Hutch Tech and McKinley in the Explorer League final already getting the sticks up. McKinley averaging about 14 penalty minutes per game, so don't be surprised to see them get the gate a few times this evening. McKinley trying to get a shot on net. Big save by Tata. Another save by Tata as they scramble, and Tata covers up for Hutch Tech. McKinley getting the early action here as O'Connor was right on the doorstep for McKinley. Some early pressure from the McKinley Eagles. You can see these schools, uh, they are smaller schools, but boy, the crowd comes out and really supports them. Even though the, the crowd is not quite as big as some of the uh, earlier games on Super Sunday, you are going to see a lot of enthusiastic fans as you see the first opportunity here. Tata, who is uh, uh, wearing number 39 for Hutch Tech, comes up with a big save. McKinley winning the face off and go to the corner and skating away now is Hutch Tech. They're trying to clear the zone as Dominkowitz tries to get it out. Cannot. It's kept in. Still in the Hutch Tech zone and finally the engineers are able to clear. Waskolevich can't keep it going though for Hutch Tech and Moran, Chris Moran with it for McKinley. Number 61, Chris Moran moves it into the zone. Tries to make his way to the net. Shot. Save again by Tata. Back to the point. The shot by Dickey just goes over the top of the net. Back to the other point, and finally out and down the ice it goes, and McKinley will have to go back and recover. The Screaming Eagles of McKinley, 25 and 1 coming into this game. Battling along at center ice, and it goes back, and Dickey will have it for McKinley. John Dickey, the sophomore, had his pass intercepted by Hutch Tech, but here come the Screaming Eagles. O'Connor coming in on net. His shot, he scores! for the Screaming Eagles, and McKinley leads 1-0. Well, Kevin O'Connor in a beautiful individual play here. You saw a lot of this last year in this very game. He just took the puck from the uh, center ice area, or actually just inside the blue line, went in all alone, and scored a nice goal. Watch this now. He steals the puck, walks right in, takes his time, and boom, over the uh, upper right hand, upper left-hand corner of the net, upper right-hand shoulder of Tata, just like that. Less than three minutes into the game, it's McKinley on top, one zip. Hutch Tech coming back. They dump it down into the McKinley zone. Duke for McKinley. Tries to get it out. Kept in nicely by Dominkowitz. And it goes wide of the net. Still in the McKinley zone. And the Screaming Eagles are able to clear as Dave Duke skates away for McKinley. Pass ahead. Here comes Hurdle. Brandon Hurdle. He can't hold on. And coming back to claim the puck for Hutch Tech is Marty Dietrich. Dietrich probably the best player for Hutch Tech. He has intercepted though and O'Connor will have another opportunity. O'Connor this time cannot beat Justin Tata and he holds on for Hutch Tech. one nothing, McKinley. Wow. Deja vu. Kevin O'Connor scores the opening goal of the game and comes back less than a minute later. Has the same exact play. This time though Tata 
look, look at this replay. Tata was up to the task. Went for the same area. Went for the upper left-hand corner, but Tata stayed his ground that time. Didn't go down quite as early. What a pickoff right there. Kevin O'Connor is off and running already. Two scoring chances for McKinley. Hutch Tech controlling the faceoff, and they send it down the ice, giving chase now for McKinley. Ryan Moran go behind his own net. He's checked there. Ryan Moran, number 97, sends it along the boards and actually up and out of play here at the HSBC Arena. Well, you had mentioned earlier that uh, McKinley, with only one loss this season, it came earlier. Riverside was the team to beat them. McKinley, uh, regular season, 24-1-0, uh, and, and then you put in uh, one of their playoff wins, 25-1-0. Uh, and, oh, and McKinley and Hutch Tech, to say that these teams know each other very well is a major understatement. It seems like every single year it's these two on Super Sunday. Shot on net finally by Hutch Tech, handled easily though by Dave Bain. Bain and net 1.54. Goals against average 18 and 1 on the season. Hutch Tech cannot keep the puck in and it'll go down the ice. And Brian Wigdorski sends it back up for Hutch Tech. Kinley tries to come back and play at center ice right now, and finally the Screaming Eagles send it in to the Hutch Tech zone. Wigdorski behind his own net, sends it up along the boards, and finally an opportunity to clear for Brandon Dominkowitz. Down it goes, Dickey back for McKinley, and he'll just go right in front of his own net. Dickey will just send it all the way down the ice. And this should be icing. And in fact is 11-19 remaining here first period. Screaming Eagles and McKinley won. Hutch Tech engineers nothing. Well, we talked about the rabid fans here as we uh, take a look at uh, McKinley head coach Bill Klein. Once again, 11 years he played, you were telling me, Jay, uh, in the first ever Explorer League Championship. Yeah, 1972, Bill Klein was in that game for McKinley, as a matter of fact, and he has coached here for many years. He's done a nice job for McKinley. McKinley just rolled through league play this year. Let's see if Hutch Tech is up to the challenge. Last year, you did the game. Of course, that one went into overtime, same two teams. 4-3, a win for McKinley in overtime last year. A little bit of an upset for the Screaming Eagles. Puck behind the Hutch Tech net now as Gorecki tries to get it out. He cannot, kept in. And now Gorecki will give chase for Hutch Tech. Stumped right back in by Pat Scheifler for McKinley. Scheifler at the point. Weak shot toward the net. Corralled by McKinley. Chris Moran can't come up with it. He goes to the corner, sends it back to the point to Scheifler, and it's finally sent down the ice by Hutch Tech. Moran back ahead to center ice, and they'll just send it right back in to the Hutch Tech zone. That's where most of the play has taken place in early action here in the Explorer League Final. Carrying on now is Gorecki for Hutch Tech, sends it behind the net. Marty Dietrich over there for Hutch Tech. Now he gets bounced off the puck, though, and McKinley will take control of the puck. Try to send it right back down the ice. Moran touches it, sends it back to Wigdorski. That's Adam Wigdorski, his brother Brian, also on the team for Hutch Tech. Now it's Waskalevich. He stopped the blue line and it's sent right back down. Hutch Tech will have to regroup. Gorecki sends it across the ice. Here come the engineers. Dominkowitz can't handle the pass. Now he comes up with it and sends it into the McKinley zone. And oh wow, Dominkowitz is just flattened on that play by Hurdle. Into the corner they go. They battle along. Moran bounces his man off the puck. Still going after it. That Dietrich, number 10, can't come up with it. And skating away now for McKinley is number three, Kevin O'Connor. Sent it down the ice. O'Connor now bumping along with Alger. It's in the McKinley zone. McKinley able to finally come up with it. Inglet sends it across the ice. O'Connor sends it around the glass for McKinley. And the Screaming Eagles will be able to break out of their zone here. They try to send it down the ice. Still alive. Hurdle. And Tata will send it across for Hutch Tech. Dominkowitz right back down and O'Connor at center ice for McKinley. O'Connor with the lone goal in this game. 1-0 McKinley over Hutch Tech. Early action in the Explorer League final. Hurdle for McKinley as the Screaming Eagles send it right back into the Hutch Tech zone. Tata will leave it behind his own net. There it's Jeremy Waskalevich. Freshman defenseman can't get it out. Kept in nicely that time. And a big hit by Waskalevich as he sends his man flying. Buck sent down the ice and it will be icing against Hutch Tech. Boy, that was a good shift for both these teams. A play going on for about two and a half minutes without a whistle. Uh, there were five, six good hits, three right in a row there. The one thing Hutch Tech really has to watch out for, uh, I believe it was Boone who was in almost alone there. That's the third time a uh, offensive forward for McKinley has gotten in behind the Hutch Tech defenseman with almost a clear shot on goal. 
Joel Boone on to take the faceoff for McKinley, but the faceoff won by Hutch Tech. Jarecki skating away for the Engineers. He takes the blue line, but uh, taken off the puck nicely by Scheifla. Scheifla sends it around and comes right back to Scheifla. Tries to work it up along the boards to Boone, and it's out of the zone. Hutch Tech, I understand, a little bit uh, stricken with the flu, and they may be a little bit shorthanded in this game. We can see the same players out there quite a bit throughout this game. Now it's Bell Show. Number 19 sends it ahead for McKinley. Back behind his own net, that's Wigdorski. Adam Wigdorski though loses it to Joel Boone. Boone taking off the puck by Wigdorski. Back to the point. Kept in by McKinley. Shot goes wide. Comes over to the near side. And now Gorecki will skate away for Hutchek. He'll just send it right behind the McKinley net. And Bain will leave it there for his man. Now it's number 27. That's John Dickey. Skating away for McKinley. Takes the center line and is knocked off the puck by Wigdorski. Joel Boone for McKinley. Sends it across. Dumping it in is Colosimo. And Hutch Tech able to come up with the loose puck. They'll send it right down the ice. And once again, we can have another icing call and will with 7.33 remaining here in the first period. 1-0 McKinley. Well, this is a pretty fast-moving period. And these two teams are not known for playing fast-moving hockey. They like to grind it out. A lot of hitting, as we've seen, that leads to a lot of penalties. As you were saying earlier, uh, uh, both these teams uh, like the penalty box. They are uh, pretty friendly with the timekeepers. No penalties so far, and only one goal. That was Kevin O'Connor at 2.06 of this first period. 1-0 McKinley. And O'Connor, the leading scorer in the Explorer League this year. McKinley with the puck. Screaming Eagles trying to battle along. That's Chris Moran, number 61. Dumps it right into the corner. They try to keep cycling along here behind the net. So Balski can't come up with it for McKinley. And Hutch Tech will try to clear the zone. They cannot, though. Hutch Tech has had all sorts of trouble getting out of their own zone. It's Fred Berry trying to move it out number 40 for Hutch Tech. Pushed ahead and still loose. And Theo Alger will grab it for Hutch Tech. Alger behind his own net. Around to Dominkowitz. Dominkowitz is hit hard right there, though, on the play. Nicely by Sobalski. Waskalevich. Can't get it out for Hutch Tech. Again, it's kept right in by McKinley. Chris Moran gives chase. Now Sobalski. Willie Sobalski has the puck. Shoots it toward the net. Goes wide of Tata. And now Waskalevich will have sent it around the glass, but it's kept in here. Sobalski has it. Dumps it in front of the net. Shot just goes wide. That was Billy Ginnick. Couldn't put it on net. Now back is Rogan. His shot goes wide. Moran has it. Chris Moran cycling along. Trying to keep the puck alive. Now Sobalski gives chase for McKinley. Sends it behind the net. And coming up with it is Billy Ginnick. Out to Rogan. His shot deflected. Rogan gives chase for McKinley. Kept in again by Sobalski. Sobalski, his shot. Tata saves it and will do wisely to freeze the puck with 6.09 remaining. one nothing. McKinley. Well, if you can listen to the Hutch Tech bench, I'm sure they're saying, will somebody pick up Willie Sobalski? What a shift for him. He was hanging out on the doorstep of the goaltender. He had a couple of good chances uh, on shots, and also, if the puck would have been an inch or two the other way, he could have tipped a few in. Let's watch right here, as this is Sobalski going with it, picking it up and putting the nice shot on goal. He'll go for the rebound, but a nice little kick in back to the goaltender there from uh, defenseman Brent Berry to uh, stop the play. Face off, controlled by McKinley, and scores! A beautiful deflection on the play by Dave Duke. Dave Duke deflected the shot from the point from John Dickey, and McKinley now leads 2-0. Well, right off the face off, you talk about losing them in your own zone, and it came back to haunt Hutch Tech on this one. Duke from Dickey. You couldn't plan it any better, whether you're playing in an Explorer League Championship or the Stanley Cup Finals. That's the way to score off the faceoff. Look at that. Nice shot right in, got deflected in front. David Duke credited with the goal from Dickey. And I'll set the puck into the Hutch Tech zone. That's where most of the play has occurred in early action so far. Dickey with the shot from the point again. O'Connor this time can't get a hold of him for McKinley now his shot from point blank range saved by Tata and they'll have the face off once again in the Hutch Tech zone. Well Hutch Tech really has to play now to get out of this period without any more uh, blood being let. They have not played well. I think there have been what only two saves in uh, the opposing team zone in uh, McKinley zone and O'Connor has controlled the puck. Zabalski has controlled the puck and really Hutch Tech is having a problem getting it out. Moran shot for the point goes over the top of the net. Ten shots on net for McKinley, just one for Hutch Tech, and it's 2-0, Screaming Eagles. Gorecki breaks out for Hutch Tech, one on two, and he's met nicely there by Scheifele, taken right off the puck, and Moran will send it around the boards. Kept in by Hutch Tech, 
They battle along the blue line, trying to get it out. Kept in nicely by the Engineers. Engineers finally maybe a shot out opportunity here. Goes wide. Nicely done by Dietrich. Just goes wide of the net. Dietrich comes up with it for Hutch Tech. Back to the point. And finally we will get out of the McKinley zone. And Hutch Tech will regroup with Dorsky. Sends it along the boards. Right back in. And Scheifele has it for McKinley. Sends it up the ice. And Hutch Tech able to control. And it goes to Gorecki. Gorecki trying to dodge the hit from Scheifele. Scheifele does a good job of interrupting his flow. Moran has it in the McKinley zone. He sends it ahead, misses his man. It goes back into the Hutch Tech zone. That's with Dorsky. With Dorsky ahead and Dietrich. Hutch Tech trailing 2 nothing. Alger along the boards. Nice move to get away. Alger takes the blue line. Tries to squeeze along the boards and sends it right behind, but nobody over there for Hutch Tech. Dominkowitz gives chase, but coming up with it is McKinley. Screaming Eagles, though, they lose control of the puck. It's Alger behind the net. Tries to get it out in front. There were two men there. He couldn't do so, though. Now along the boards. And coming out with it is Scheifele. I think Pat Scheifele takes the red line. His shot handled nicely by Tata. And he will hold on with 4-0-4 remaining and his team trailing 2-0. That's about the best pressure that Hutch Tech's gotten on uh, McKinley in this first period. Uh, Pat Scheifele, who just took that shot, you will see him on the ice probably every other shift for McKinley. One difference between uh, McKinley this year and last year, last year McKinley had to go with two major lines. This year, McKinley's going to try to roll three lines. That'll keep them much fresher when the third period comes around. Back to the point it goes. It's kept in by Dickty. Dickty with an assist already. Nice move. Gets it in front. Oh, beautiful deflection, but a great save by Tata. Behind him that they battle. Coming up with it is McKinley. Dietrich tries to get it out for Hutch Tech and finally does. Going back and claiming it, Garrett Kelly. Sophomore defenseman for McKinley over to Dickty. John Dickty. Dumps it in, kept in there by Hutch Tech, and they just push it forward. And once again, McKinley has the puck. For the Screaming Eagles, that's Ryan Moran. He sends it behind the Hutch Tech net. Barry, Brent Barry, can't come up with it. Stolen by Joel Boone. His backhand shot goes wide. McKinley gives chase again. They try to cycle in. Colosimo sends it around the net. Over on the far side, Tim Felshow battles along the boards. Number 19 for McKinley. Still loose. Hutch Tech just sends it around the boards to an open wing. Out to center ice, and Moran will have it. Number 97, Ryan Moran. Long pass ahead, misses Felshow, and will go behind the Hutch Tech net, and it'll be an icing. Again, keep the puck in, but now it goes back to center ice. And now it's stolen by Sobalski. Here comes Willie Sobalski again for McKinley. Dumps it behind, Moran, his shot. Nice save by Tata. Kept in by McKinley, behind the net. Moran, Chris Moran out front. His backhand saved by Tata. He loses sight of the puck. And finally, very smartly, his defenseman just jumps it up underneath his pad. That's Tyrone for Hutch Tech. And Tata will hold on with 2.35 remaining, his team trailing 2-0. Tata's working up a sweat here in the first period. Uh, being outshot right now, I believe it is at 12-1. to 14-1, to actually, is the uh, shots on goal right now in favor of McKinley. Uh, but as you look right now, McKinley uh, off the faceoff, uh, trying to put pressure on once again. Hutch Tech, final will get it out of their own zone as Gorecki sends it ahead. His pass, though, intercepted. Gorecki gives chase again, comes up with the puck, sends it right back down. And McKinley's Pat Scheifele has it. And he clears his zone. Center ice. It's taken there by Hutch Tech. That's Tyrone. Tyrone shot, saved there by Bain. Bain has, has not had to been very sharp so far. He's only had two saves. Kinley sends it down the ice. And Wigdorski has it. But it's intercepted. Here comes Sobalski. A shot score right through the five hole on Tata. 3 0 McKinley with 1.58 remaining in the first period. Well, it's early in the game, the first period still, but if you can call an early goal a backbreaker, that might be it. 2 0 going into the second period. Hutch Tech is thinking we could do that. Down 3 0, and especially with a giveaway like this, that is a tough one. Willie Sobalski. We have been saying his name all afternoon long. Camped down on the doorstep at times, and this time he does all the work himself. You see him steal the puck and uh, goes in all alone. Another breakaway goal for McKinley. Freeze him. Been all McKinley so far in the Explorer League final here on Super Sunday. Hutch Tech battling along in their own zone again. In front of the net. Oh boy, another big save by Justin Tata. This time he turns away Brandon Hurdle. Hutch Tech comes back. They send it behind the McKinley net. Comes around the loose board there. Dominkowitz has it for Hutch Tech. 
Engineers try to keep it in. Alger has it stolen away. Nice play by McKinley. That's O'Connor. O'Connor takes the blue line. O'Connor continues on. He already has one goal. His pass. Duke can't come up with it for McKinley. Far side it goes to Brandon Hurdle. Set right back in behind the Hutch Tech net. Duke has it. I had to go Connor. His shot from the side. Hits the side of the net. Hutch Tech finally gains control to Minkowitz. Trying to get out of his own zone. O'Connor, though, nice job back checking. Almost comes up with the steal. Now O'Connor has it for McKinley. To Minkowitz takes over for Hutch Tech. And it goes to England. McKinley will clear the zone. Less than a minute to play here in the first period. 3 0 McKinley. Dickey comes in. Fenceman carrying the puck ahead. His pass. Oh, boy. Just misses Duke. And we may. Have, oh, I thought we were going to have a penalty. Instead, the net was knocked off. And a faceoff will come up here in the Hutch Tech zone with 47 and a half seconds remaining first period. That was very close to uh, being a penalty there. Maybe a, a hooking call. Um, but, and you would think in a situation like this, if a referee is going to maybe give on a call or something, Hutch Tech was in need of a penalty right there. But not that the referees would ever do that, Jim. I've never heard of anything like an even-up call. I know. Along those Especially not in hockey. Mythic. Doesn't exist. Joel Boone on to take the face off for McKinley. This time, Hutch Tech tries to clear the zone, and finally they will. Gorecki skates away. Gorecki for Hutch Tech. His team trailing 3 0. Gorecki comes in on net. Bain steers it away for McKinley. Out to the point, and kept in by Wigdorski. They battle for the loose puck in front, and now McKinley will skate away with 30 seconds to go. Gorecki has it for Hutch Tech. Battled along the board with Felsha. O'Connor for McKinley. Tries to move away. Has it knocked back by Wigorski, or Gorecki rather, and he sends it right behind the McKinley net with 15 seconds to go. 3-0 McKinley in first period action. Out to center ice it goes. Wigorski can't handle it. He's going to have to give chase. Nine seconds. Wigorski sends it around the glass. O'Connor can't keep it in for McKinley. Gorecki battles. Over to Wigdorski, and he'll just send it down the ice, and that will do it for first period action here as we go to intermission between the first and second periods of McKinley in total control here, leading Hutch Tech 3-0 in the Explorer League Final on Super Sunday. This is Adelphia Channel 13, Blades of Fire. If with a magic sweep of the hand, we could make smog and air pollution disappear. Hi, I'm Lance Burton. The enormous amount of traffic on our roads often keeps pollution at dangerous levels, making it difficult to breathe, aggravating asthma and lung disease. How can we escape this? Clean, alternatively fueled vehicles like these. Nearly every major manufacturer makes them. Cars, trucks, and buses that dramatically cut harmful emissions can really help clean our air. for second period action here. Super Sunday Explorer League final and McKinley in total control. Rob Lucas, 3-0 over Hutch Tech. And the uh, stats reflect that. 16-1, the shots on goal. Hutch Tech really had a couple of good scoring opportunities. Only one went on net. Basically, if you are Hutch Tech at this point in the game, you just need to score the next goal. If you score the next goal, it's a game again. It's that simple. And I'm not saying this just for the Hutch Tech fans who are watching, but last year's game between the same two teams started out almost like this. And the team that was behind at the beginning ended up winning at the end. So it's Explorer League hockey. We've got two periods to go. I hate to say anything can happen, but anything can happen and has on Super <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> Absolutely. We've seen it already today. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, Super Sunday hockey on Adelphia Channel 13. We'll be seeing it replayed. Pretty much all week long, as a matter of fact. And we're glad to have you along for this game, the Explorer League final, the final game of Super Sunday between McKinley and Hutch Tech. Hutch Tech in the red and blue, in the Colorado Avalanche colors. They trail 3 nothing. McKinley. That's Dickey back at his own blue line. Has it intercepted. Dickey, though, able to get it back and send it ahead to get it. Get it. Knocked off the puck and sent right back to center ice. Dickey has been outstanding carrying the puck for McKinley since behind the net. Tata has it for Hutch Tech to Dominkowitz. Dominkowitz trying to gather the puck. Cannot. He's knocked off. Turnover in the zone. And the pass out in front. Knocked ahead or knocked away, I should say, by Wigdorski. Hutch Tech trying to get out of their own zone. They've had trouble doing so so far in this game. Kelly can't get it for McKinley. And here come the Hutch Tech engineers. England 
Tries to pass it out in front. He's knocked down and off the puck. Alger behind the net. He's bumped. And now Kelly has it for McKinley. Chris Moran. He's bumped off. Kept in. Shot goes wide. A rare shot opportunity for Hutch Tech. Kelly sends it over to an open wing. It's kept in by Hutch Tech. And this time, Bain has trouble handling that shot from the wing and was unsure of whether or not he had made the save. He holds on, though, and the faceoff will be in the McKinley zone. That's a nice scoring opportunity for Hutch Tech. Uh, Marty Dietrich was right in front of the net, waiting to pounce on it. He may have even tipped it as it went through, but as you said, David Bain squeezed the pads together and held on, held on to it. Let's see. And there is Bain looking behind him a little bit, but you see Dietrich right there waiting for it. I don't know if he got it on the way down, but a nice play, a good offensive effort by Hutch Tech. That's what they need to do. Just keep doing that over and over, and something's going to go in. Dietrich facing off against O'Connor for McKinley. And Hutch Tech able to control. Shot. This one goes wide by Wigdorski. Brent Berry gives chase for Hutch Tech. Keeps it in. Down to the corner. They go. Dietrich can't come up with it. And they send it out to center ice. Hutch Tech back. And coming up with it is Waskalevich. Tries to push it ahead. And we'll have an offside at the McKinley blue line with 13.30 remaining here in the second period. 3-0 McKinley. You know, we do have uh, Mark Jagger at sidelines. He's ringside between the two benches, and I, I think you heard you mention that some of the guys on Hutch Tech have the flu, and uh, he's looking for surgical masks down there, I think, just to make sure he doesn't catch anything, and Mark will be talking to the coaches during the game and after as well. And we're looking forward to hearing Mark throughout today's contest as well for his uh, expert insights. Shot, oh boy, I don't think Payne saw that, but he was able to steer it away nonetheless. Duke for McKinley. Cross ice pass intercepted and sent right back for Hutch Tech. Hutch Tech looking a little bit more organized in the second period so far. And it goes. That's Duke for McKinley. One on two. Drops it. Hurdle. His shot blocked. Now it's O'Connor. O'Connor snapshot. Oh boy. Big save by Tata. To the point. Ryan Moran. Another big save. Right in the slot. Shot. Oh. Big save by Tata. Hurdle couldn't put it home. Here come the engineers. They break out, but it's intercepted by Moran. Ryan Moran brings it right back. His shot for the point. Another save by Tata. Moran pushes it towards the net. Save by Tata. This time, he'll hold on. Well, Hutch check with early, early action in their end in this period, and it's kind of uh, what happened in the first period. McKinley just not giving up. Long shots this time. In the first period, it was those close-in chances. This time through, long shots. When you saw the stats on Tata, man, he has uh, earned his keep tonight. Uh, he's got to feel like the defense has let him down. Here's a big long rebound. That is the goaltender's worst enemy is a long rebound. That just gives up more opportunities to score. And here's another one of that. Well, that shot might have been going wide. He may have been better off to let that go. But when you're down 3 nothing, don't take any chances as a goaltender. And after the faceoff is just sent right back down the ice by Hutch Tech. Icing will be called. They'll bring the puck all the way back down into the Hutch Tech zone. Hutch Tech, this is their 16th. Super Sunday appearance. They have won seven of them. League record this year, 13-7-4. Uh, they, of course, won it in 2000, and uh, they defeated City Honors to get here two games to one. Dramatic playoff victory with Gorecki coming up with a shorthanded goal to win that playoff game. Hutch Tech comes back. They have an opportunity here. Backhand shot. Alger can't finish it. Does finish it. Deep pass made. And Alger will get the goal for Hutch Tech. And that is just what Hutch Tech Super Sunday appearance. record this year 13 7 and 4 uh, they of course won it in 2000 and uh, they defeated City Honors to get here two games to one dramatic playoff victory with Gorecki coming up with a shorthanded goal to win that playoff game Hutch Tech comes back they have an opportunity here backhand shot Alger can't finish it does finish it deep past Bain and Alger 
Mitchell will get the goal for Hutch Tech, and it makes it 3-1 to Kinley. That is just what Hutch Tech needed. Kind of a sloppy goal just went across the goal line, but it's the product of hard work for Hutch Tech, and they have to feel now like they are back in the game. Just listen to those fans. Even though they were down early 3-0, here's the play. Watch the shot on goal. The puck comes out again, and it just happens to go across the, the goal line. It's tough to see with all the action in front, but when you get a sliding goaltender, a lot of times the puck doesn't go with him. It went the other way, and Alger will get credit for the goal. That'll be Alger who gets the goal at 247 to make it 3-1. Inglet will get the assist for Hutch Tech. McKinley comes back. Opportunity right here. Moran knocked off the puck at the last minute. Sends it behind the net. Ginnick has it. Get it. The center right behind the net to Moran. Back to Ginnick. McKinley just setting up shot behind the Hutch Tech net. Ginnick tries to get it up to Sobalski in front of the net, but Hutch Tech intercepts, and they are able to clear the zone finally. Sent back into the Hutch Tech zone. Giving chase behind his own net is Wigdorski. Sends it to an open wing. It's intercepted there by Sobalski. Hutch Tech, though, able to come up with the puck, and they set it down on the ice. Moran will give chase. Moran with the backhand out to center ice. Ahead to his brother, Ryan Moran. Now it's Chris Moran. Or make that Ryan Moran, rather. 97. His shot saved by Tata. Whoa. And now, oh boy, a collision, Ooh. and we will have a penalty. Adam Wodorski just went head first into the post. That looks scary. He is okay. Boy, that was scary. And the penalty will go against Moran. Ryan Moran, number 97, the defenseman for McKinley. Now watch on the replay here as uh, Wodorski tries to clear the puck, and he's pushed into the post. That was very scary. I I'm surprised that uh, they didn't think about making that maybe a five-minute major. When you're talking about a check that sends somebody's head either into the boards or into the post, that is a serious, serious thing. And very lucky that uh, Wodorski's walking away from that. So now, uh, Hutch Tech... They are uh, going to go on the power play for two minutes. So Hutch Tech trailing by two. Cut it to one here on this power play opportunity. Scheifele for McKinley. Sends it around the boards and out and down into the Hutch Tech zone. Barry could not keep it in. Brent Barry goes back. And he'll try to start the Hutch Tech power play. 10.54 remaining in the second period. 3-1 McKinley. Hutch Tech giving chase is Dominkowitz. He can't come up with it. Hurdle has it for McKinley. Sends it along the boards. Barry tries to keep it in. Back to the point. Shot goes wide. They give chase behind. And Scheifele has it for McKinley. Back to Barry. Brent Barry. Pressured. Sends along the boards. And oh boy, a big hit right there by Hurdle. But the puck comes out in front of the net. Dominkowitz though cannot hold on to it. And McKinley able to clear their zone. They send it down. That's Dickney who sends it down for McKinley. Now, even though Hutch Tech has a power play here, they have to watch out for number three on McKinley, uh, Kevin O'Connor. He can break out with uh, open ice and really take that puck into it in situations like this. Dickney with another open ice hit for McKinley. And sending it down the ice is Scheifele for the Screaming Eagles with 43 seconds remaining in the power play. Under 10 minutes to play here in the second period. 3-1, McKinley. O'Connor comes up with a loose puck to center ice for the Screaming Eagle. They battle along the boards, back into the McKinley zone, but Hurdle has it, and he sends it right back out to center ice. Marty Dietrich, his shot. Oh, Bain has trouble with that one. Finally, he just puts it aside, and Scheifele has it for McKinley. He'll just flip it down the ice, and O'Connor waits for it. He's on sides. He comes in alone. His shot, he scores! Oh, Kevin O'Connor puts it home for his second goal of the game, a short-handed effort by O'Connor on a beautiful pass from Scheifele, and McKinley leads 4-1. to one. I don't want to say he told you so, but I just said watch out for O'Connor short-handed. There he was, hanging along the blue line. Look at that long pass. It bounces three or four times like a ground ball. O'Connor, like in the first period, this time he chooses top shelf, right-hand side, and he puts him up 4-1. That is such a huge goal for McKinley, and now Hutch Tech has to feel like, man, we got the goal back, we had all that enthusiasm, and we're back down to being three goals down. And of course, in the professional leagues, that would have been an offside two-line pass, but in a high school play, as in collegiate play and Olympian play, uh, the uh, red line not in effect on offside opportunities. And I think that's a great rule. I think we've seen from Olympic hockey and the way it's gone there, I would love to see that adopted into the NHL. You can keep the red line there, just don't call it. 
And the power play over for Hutch Tech. They gave up the shorthanded goal and trail 4-1. Shot by Moran from the point. Steered away by Tata. In the corner they go. Battling along the boards. And they send it over to an open wing. Hutch Tech trying to work it out. Ginnick over there for McKinley. Also Boone battles along the boards. They send it toward the net. And collecting it is Wigdorski for Hutch Tech. Finally out of the zone, and here they come. Jonathan Tyrone with a two-on-one. Tyrone with Dietrich, his shot. Bain steers it away. Tyrone, Tyrone rather over to Dietrich. He tries to center it out. He cannot do so. Back to the point it goes, and McKinley cannot get it out. Finally, the Screaming Eagles are able to clear. They lean 4-1. Getting up is Chris Moran. Chris Moran at the blue line. He steered away, but Rogan comes up with a loose puck. He shoots it toward the net, and Tata will hold on for Hutch Tech. 8-18 remaining second period, 4-1 McKinley. Well, McKinley just getting the shorthanded goal. Next time McKinley has a, a, a deficit, if they're a man down, when Hutch Tech has a power play, we're going to try to watch. I want to show you how McKinley sets up. They take all their four penalty killers, and they don't do a box. They just line up right across the blue line. They dare you to dump the puck in, a puck in or skate past them. It is unbelievable to see. Literally, it's like they're glued to the blue line. On the faceoff, goes back to Rogan for McKinley. His shot, though, is knocked away by Alger. And here comes Hutch Tech. Dominkowitz is upset at the blue line by Dickty. 54, McKinley sends the cross ice to Ginnick, who leaves it right there for Chris Moran. Chris Moran skates in and is able to put it on net. Tata cannot hold on, and it goes in the net. Another McKinley goal, and it's 5-1 Screaming Eagles. Well, this is one Tata wishes he certainly had back. The others were tough. They were breakaways. They were great shots. This is one every goaltender's nightmare. Uh, sometimes it happens to the best of them. A puck right up the middle, and he doesn't squeeze the legs. Now watch here comes the shot right in, right through the five hole, and it looked like he had it, and something happened, or maybe it got poked. It was laying there, and a player behind poked it in, but you got to squeeze the legs on that. Let's look again. There it is, just laying right behind, and it gets tucked in right around the net. Ginnick, number 90, may have gotten that goal. I'm not sure if Ginnick finished it up, as we'll have a change in goaltenders. Tata, shell shock, heads to the bench, and Campanella comes in for Hutch Tech. And this is a good move by Coach Bob Westfall. And I'm sure he's telling his goaltender, Tata, look, it's not all your fault. That was a bad, a bad goal, but that's not the reason I'm taking you out. It's 5-1 now with Hutch Tech with a chance. And they score! Nicely done by the engineers to answer. Just seconds later, putting it home, Brandon Dominkowitz. And the engineers cut the lead to three. Well, you pull your goaltender, change him up with hopes of sparking your team. It happened. It uh, makes Bob Westfall look really good right now. He changes the goaltender. Hutch Tech comes down and scores. As here we go with the shot and the rebound put in there. Dominikowicz, Johnny on the spot, and it's 5-2. And again, a three-goal deficit. It's not that impossible to come back from. It's wide open hockey here on Super Sunday in the Explorer League Final 5-2. Midway through the second period, McKinley leading Hutch Tech. That goal coming at 8-18 of the second period. Dominkowitz putting it home for Hutch Tech. Engineers try to pass ahead, intercepted by Scheifla. O'Connor can't carry on for McKinley. There comes Tyrone for Hutch Tech. He's intercepted by Scheifla. Taking the blue line now is Hutch Tech. It's Waskalevich. He can't move ahead, but it's kept in at the point. Shot on, turned away by Bain. Now Kevin O'Connor skates away for McKinley. O'Connor already with two goals today. O'Connor skates in for McKinley. He'll just send it in behind the net. Going back to claim it is Waskalevich. Now it's O'Connor for McKinley. Back to the point. Shot by Moran. Just goes wide. There goes Gorecki for Hutch Tech. Sends it ahead. Dietrich will give chase for Hutch Tech. Actually, it'll go behind the net. They'll call icing against McKinley. Now, if you're wondering why this game has opened up so suddenly, I think it's because Hutch Tech fell behind early, so they just said, all right, we're going to go out and have fun. We're just going to play, play, play a little game of shinny here at the uh, HSBC Arena. They started having fun. They started opening it up. They scored a goal. Yeah, McKinley came back, scored another. But you're seeing a little more jump in the Hutch Tech step right now. I think it's because those 13 new players are now used to the environment. They're thinking, yeah, we put two on the board. Let's go up for more. And because they were down early, I think it helped them overcome those jitters. They just got loose and played hockey. 
In the Hutch Tech zone again, 5-2 McKinley. Chris Moran sends it along the board. Giving chase now is McKinley. That's Sobalski. But Hutch Tech able to come up with a loose puck, and here come the engineers. Along the near boards, Bauer sends it in. Bauer can't come up with a loose puck. And Sobalski will clear the zone for McKinley. Wigdorski can't handle it for Hutch Tech. Ginnick has it. Uh, to Wigdorski for Hutch Tech. He sends it in. Bain will just steer it aside, and Kelly has it for McKinley. Along the boards, Bauer tries to send it toward the net, cannot do so. And Scheifla will skate away for McKinley. Here comes Scheifla. Over the red line, over the blue line, still carries on, and finally has it knocked away. But it's kept in by McKinley. Chris Morant sends it behind the net, and defenseman Scheifla is behind the net with the puck for McKinley. Checked off by Wigdorski. Back to the point it goes. Ginnick sends it along the boards for McKinley. Back to the point. Ginnick tries to keep it in for the Screaming Eagles. Chris Moran there, batting along, number 61, along with England. And finally, Hutch Tech cannot get it out still, and they send it out to center ice. Sobalski, his shot, saved by Campanella, his first save of the game. Wigdorski, he can't clear it. Kept in by McKinley. Two-on-one opportunity right in front of the net. Batting along, Sobalski, he drops it back to the point, but nobody home for McKinley. And coming back to claim the puck for the Screaming Eagles now is Rogan. Rogan behind his own net to Moran, out to center ice. There's Dietrich for Hutch Tech. Dietrich dumps it back in. We'll have an offside if they can't clear the zone. They finally do. Like offside, waved off. Back down to the Hutch Tech zone. Not out. Get it. Keeps it along the board. Now Chris Moran going into the corner, battling along the board. He's taking off the puck. Back to the point. Moran has it. Ryan Moran, his cross-ice pass is intercepted. And here comes Hutch Tech with a two-on-two. But Dietrich will be offside, and they'll call it with 4.40 remaining here. Second period, 5-2, McKinley. Dietrich made a pretty good effort to try to stay outside, but he would have been better off skating evenly with the blue line. That's one thing young players have to learn. If you don't have the puck in your first, go across. Try to uh, go evenly with the blue line. Now let's watch this go into the corner here. As uh, This is McKinley with pressure into the corner. And... Uh, that is uh, Hutch Deck trying to clear it out. Back to live action we go. 5-2 in favor of McKinley. We saw the scoring chances. Obviously McKinley leading in that department as well. Behind the net, Dickty has it for McKinley. Skates in front of his own net. And skates away cleanly. Very nicely done. Ahead to O'Connor. Here comes Kevin O'Connor. His shot saved by Campanella. And he will hold on. I don't think he was totally sure. If he had the puck or not, he decides to hold on with 4.16 remaining 5-2 McKinley. You know, it's funny. We've seen a, a lot of goaltenders, especially young ones, when they catch the puck, they're, they're like, do I have it? Do I have it? And I think that's that's something that comes with age, something that comes with time. You've got to feel the puck. It's got to become a part of your body, and when you get it, you've got to let it stick with you. Young goaltenders, it's just the development process of knowing where it is on their body. Face off, Joel Boone can't come up with it for McKinley, and... They'll just send it right down the ice. Dickey comes back to center ice for McKinley. Ahead to O'Connor. O'Connor has his pass intercepted. Now O'Connor, his uh -oh. skate, knocks it ahead. Here comes O'Connor over the blue line. Nice move by O'Connor. He comes in, back end shot. Oh, nice save by Campanella. O'Connor back to Moran at the point. His shot, steer toward the net, and Campanella, they lose sight of the puck, and they will call it a frozen puck by Campanella, although it did come out from underneath his pads. The referee lost sight of it, so... They blow it dead with 3.52 remaining, 5-2, McKinley. Aaron Campanella, a busy boy since he's taken over midway through the second period. Watch that save on O'Connor. He knows when O'Connor's coming in, O'Connor's already got three goals this afternoon. That's the first time O'Connor's been beaten. And then the rebound comes to the front again, and Campanella does cover up outstanding defensive play by the young goaltender. Shot by Brandon Hurdle goes wide for McKinley. The battle along the board. Hutch Tech trying to clear their zone, but it's kept in now by Duke. Duke battling in the corner, along with Wigdorski. Goes behind the net, right out in front. Oh, and Hurdle can't come up with it. Here comes Hutch Tech. Engineers over the red line. They send it in. Wigdorski behind the net. Bain will leave it there for Kelly. Kelly, his pass deflected right in front of the net, but nobody home there for Hutch Tech. And McKinley has a three-on-one opportunity if they hurry. O'Connor over the blue line. Over to Duke. Duke can't come up with the pass, though. Good back check by Hutch Tech. O'Connor behind the net. Ahead to Duke. Duke puts it towards the net. Campanella tries to dive on it. Still loose. Hurdle keeps it in. His backhand is deflected, and it's sent down the ice. That back check earlier, Brandon Dominkiewicz, he got back and made a nice play against O'Connor and Duke. 
A tech will just send it down the ice. It'll go wide of the net, and this will be icing against the Engineers with 2.52 remaining. 5-2 McKinley entertaining second period. Absolutely. Both teams opening it up, and uh, I think Hutch Tech, they're not happy being down three goals, but I think a lesser team, they didn't have the heart they have, it'd be much worse right now, maybe 8-2. Uh, the, the two goals they scored, one a little bit sloppy, but the other one a definite good goal. And Hutch Tech, they've got some promise as they go to the third period again. They want to get out of the second period down 5-2, maybe put one in to make it 5-3. That's the bulky line back on for McKinley. Moran's shot from the point is deflected. Back to the blue line it goes, kept in by Scheifla. Scheifla just backhands it behind the net. Sending along the boards is Waskalevich, and out to center ice finally. Puck loose, and Hutch Tech tries to skate away, and finally they do, but Moran just one-hands it out of the zone. Ahead to Chris Moran, and now giving chase is Ginnick. Ginnick for McKinley, taken off the puck nicely by Barrett. Behind the net, Campanella deflected for Hutch Tech. Chris Moran sends it behind the net. Sobalski can't come up with the puck, and now over to claim it is Waskalevich. He sends it out, but it's kept in by Scheifla, and McKinley able to keep it into the Hutch Tech zone. Waskalevich tries to get it out. And finally does. They battle along at the blue line. Moran gets it in to Sobalski to Moran in the slot. Moran, his backhand saved by Campanella, and he will hold on as Sobalski was skating right in front of the net. I tell you, Campanella has looked really strong in net. Uh, we just saw the shot 28 to 8 in the shots overall, 5 2. McKinley on top, but Campanella has made a couple 3 4 5 point blank saves. Let's look at this one again. Uh, uh, again, the puck right in front of the net. Campanella goes down and manages to keep the feet together. That's another one of those. Look, there's two McKinley players right there. If he doesn't keep it uh, within his grasp, that's certainly in the net. McKinley leading 5 2 under two minutes to play here. In the second period of the Explorer League Final, glad to have you along on Super Sunday. I'm Jay Moran, along with Rob Lucas today. Waskalevich behind his own net for Hutch Tech, sent along the boards. England has it for the Engineers. He dumps it out to center ice. Kinley, they'll just dump it back toward the blue line. O'Connor can't come up with it. He's bumped off by Wojorski. That's Brian Wojorski, the sophomore defenseman for Hutch Tech. Now Tyrone in over the blue line and knocked off the puck. They battle along for the loose puck. That's Alger, and he'll send it into the corner. Giving chase is England. Tries to dump it in front. Tyrone, his centering pass is deflected by McKinley. But the Screaming Eagles cannot get it out of their zone. O'Connor now. O'Connor knocked off the puck, sends it toward the net, and it goes in the net! It's knocked in by McKinley, and just like that, Hutchback is back in the game at 5-3. Incredible. Just when you think Hutchback is down, they get another goal. This one, you can't say they didn't deserve it. They worked hard to get it, but they didn't put it in. McKinley puts it in their own net. Watch now the replay as it's knocked in from the side off one McKinley, off another McKinley player, and past the goaltender. Unbelievable. It is 5-3 now. How big is that goal with a minute six remaining in the period? A two-goal deficit. Hutch Tech again. McKinley, much better players. McKinley controlling play. McKinley only up by two. And it looks like we're going to have ourselves a whale of a third period. 5-3. McKinley under one minute remaining here in the second period. Hutch Tech trying to get some more. Nice defensive play, though, by Scheifele to interrupt that offensive opportunity. Out to center ice it goes. Hurdle for McKinley along the boards to Duke. Duke trying to set it ahead. Hutch Tech, though, once again in control. Engineers have really settled down, especially since Campanella came in the net. Now the puck sent in. They were looking for icing. They did not get it. And now an opportunity. Oh, and Bain luckily sticks the glove out at the last second and knocks that would-be goal away with 22 and a half seconds remaining. That's another one. It could have been icing. It wasn't. Hutch Tech had the better legs. They uh, won the race to the uh, to the end line, picked up the puck. It got thrown in the front. When you're behind, just get the puck to the net. A lot of times good things happen. Now watch this. Just throw it in front, see what happens. It gets deflected, deflected again, boom. Almost in the net, and the big save. So all of a sudden, McKinley not playing as sharply as they did early in the game. Back to the point it goes. Stopped by Scheifla. Now Dietrich has his shot deflected. Back out to Dietrich in front. Oh, loose puck that can't be handled by Hutch Tech. Engineers with another opportunity. Ten seconds remaining. Going to the corner. They come up with a loose puck. They send it back to the point. Wigdorski, his shot. Oh, big save by Bain. Two seconds remaining. And it looks like McKinley will be able to run off the clock here in the second period. But we look like we'll have ourselves 
a third period here in the Explorer League final. 5-3 McKinley at the end of two. I want to know, when did these teams change uniforms? <laughs> I didn't see them go to the locker room. But that last three or four minutes was very scary for McKinley. Hutch Tech, as you see them going into the locker room, they got to feel like they've got a chance. 5-3 as we end the second period. I see down on the ice we have uh, Mark Jagger. Not yet. We'll uh, keep it right here. Uh, hopefully we'll hear from both coaches. I see Coach Westfall down there along with Mark Jaggard and also uh, Coach Klein. And we will uh, send things down to Mark Jagger down at center ice where he's with both coaches. Mark? Yes, I'm down at uh, ice level here with uh, both coaches and uh, Bob Westfall. 22 seconds left in that second period. It came almost within a goal, a real close call. Assess the game so far for us. We came out really very, very sluggish. Maybe just from waiting around. We had to, just a little slow to... Our transition game's been a little on the slow side, but you can never count us out. We've been fighting back all year long. Well, good luck to the third period. And over to the McKinley coach, Bill Klein. Bill, a missed icing call. Almost put this a one-goal game in a game that you've completely dominated. Assess the, what you've seen so far. I think we've made a few mistakes. In, uh, there, two of their goals have been scored on, a, on turnovers and on the rush. I think in our defensive zone coverage, we've been pretty tight. When they've been down there, uh, they haven't scored except on the rush. When they try to set up, we pretty much uh, shut them down. Well, there you have it. Just uh, 20 minutes, barring overtime left here. And it is a two-goal lead for McKinley. Let's go back up to Rob and Jay. Thank you, uh, Mark. It is 5-3 McKinley over Hutch Tech, but Hutch Tech on the momentum right now. It's Super Sunday. We are at the HSBC Arena in downtown Buffalo, and you're watching the Explorer Finals. Digital divide. The distance we allow between those who have the power of information and those who don't. In AmeriCorps, we're working to bridge that gap so that all of us can get to a better place. We're going around the world, on the web. In AmeriCorps, it's not can you make a difference, it's where. It's your world. It's your chance to make it better. Getting ready for third period action here. Super Sunday, the final game, the Explorer League final between McKinley and Hutch Tech. And Hutch Tech has made a game if they trailed 5-1, but as we head to the third period, Rob Lucas, it's 5-3 McKinley. Yeah, let's reset the game. McKinley, in case you were watching earlier, went out to a 3-0 lead, including a shorthanded goal. McKinley came, or Hutch Tech came back out to make it 3-1. McKinley scores to make it 4-1. And then a couple of wild goals for Hutch Tech. So it's 5-3 with 15 minutes to go in a game that has included virtually everything. Short-handed goals, uh, shots going off the crossbar, goaltenders having uh, pucks go through their legs, a goaltending change, and it's still not over. We've got a period left. Looking forward to an exciting third period. Glad to have you along with us on Adelphia Channel 13, Blades of Fire, Super Sunday Explorer League Final. And Hutch Tech trying to... Cap, a miraculous comeback here. They trailed 5-1. They now trail 5-3 as Campanella leaves it behind his own net for Hutch Tech. The engineers trying to skate away. They've had trouble clearing their zone throughout the game. But they've battled back to make it a contest. O'Connor keeps it in. But Hutch Tech is able to skate away. That's Barry. Nice pass ahead. And here comes Dietrich. His shot deflected wide. Goes behind the net. Dietrich and Gorecki to uh, converge there. Gorecki can't keep it in. It goes back to the point. There, Waskalevich sends it along the board. Dietrich over on the far side for Hutch Tech in front of the net. Loose puck. Nobody can come up with it. Back to the point it goes. Waskalevich can't keep it in. It goes back to center ice. And Hutch Tech will regroup. Barry. Brent Barry. Pass ahead. Nicely done to the blue line. Gorecki has it. Gorecki along the board. Taken off the puck nicely by Scheifele. And Scheifele will just send it down the ice. And that will be icing against McKinley. A lot of pressure for Hutch Tech to start the period. You've got to like what Bob Westfall said to Mark Jaggard at the end of the second period. He said, we've been under the gun all season long. We've had things go wrong. These kids are tough. We come back. There was no give up in them at all. And look at the way they've started this uh, third period with a lot of pressure in the McKinley end. These two teams 
have met six times this year. McKinley winning all six, outscoring Hutch Tech 38 to 12. But in this contest, Hutch Tech has been able to cut it to a two goal deficit, 5 3. Moran along the boards, over to Moran, Ryan Moran. Ahead it goes to Sobalski. Sobalski takes the blue line, leaves it there. Shot just goes wide by Ginnett. Over to the near side. They battle along the boards. Chris Moran dumps it into the corner. Wigdorski for Hutch Tech. Backhand along the boards. And Dominkowitz has it for Hutch Tech. Out to center ice. Sobalski has it for McKinley. But Dominkowitz is able to intercept that pass. Back to center ice. England will send it in for Hutch Tech. And giving chase now is Ryan Moran. Number 97 sends it along the board up to center ice, and Sobalski has it for McKinley. Sobalski taken off the play by Wojtorski, but he carries on ahead to Ginnick. Ginnick behind the net. He already has a goal. Leaves it there for Chris Moran, but Moran can't come up with it. Goes back to the point. Shot by Dickney. Goes wide. Behind the net, Chris Moran cycling along. Ginnick now has it for Mc McKinley. Ginnick just leaves it behind the net again. They continue to cycle along. Chris Moran can't come up with it. They send it along the boards, and finally Dominkowitz will get it out for Hutch Tech to center ice. Dickney has it. Leaves it there for Sobalski. Over to Moran. Chris Moran to Sobalski. Sobalski with an opportunity. Nice save by Campanella, and he holds on. 12.43 remaining third period. 5-3 McKinley. What a nice setup from Chris Moran to Sobalski. They almost did the reverse earlier. They almost had the same type of play the last time up the ice. Let's watch it this time. This is Moran across the blue line. He'll make a nice move, and the headman passed to Sobalski there, and he has been all over the ice for McKinley. Nice quick shot, got it away, and a good goaltender by, uh, or a good save by goaltender Campanella. Scheifele for McKinley off the faceoff. Shot on, saved by Campanella. He holds on again, and Campanella has not surrendered a goal since he came in midway through this contest. Absolutely. He came in uh, halfway through the second period, and it wasn't that uh, the guy who was replacing uh, Justin uh, Tata was playing that poorly. He only let in one goal that he wished he could have back. They just needed something to spark the team, and that seemed to be it. A great move by Coach Bob Westfall. O'Connor for McKinley. Shot handled by Campanella. Leaves the rebound. Barry... Clears it for Hutch Tech, but kept in by McKinley. Shot from the point goes around and out towards center ice. O'Connor can't come up with it. And going back is Scheifla for McKinley. He'll skate behind his own net. Watched there by Gorecki. Scheifla. Bad pass, almost knocked right into his own net. Sends along the boards this time. And O'Connor tries to clear for McKinley. He does. Out to center ice it goes. The battle along the boards. Boone leaves it there. Hutch Tech can't come up with it. Barry. And now it's Fell show over to the boards they go. And Hutch Tech able to gain the blue line, but they send it right back out to center ice. Dumped in by Boone. Behind the net, and it's left there. Giving chase. Nobody wants the puck. Barry goes after it for Hutch Tech. Ahead it goes to Dietrich. Marty Dietrich tries to get out. Dietrich cannot clear. Now finally sends it down the ice. And Scheifele has it for McKinley. 11.30 remaining. Third period. 5-3 McKinley. Here come the Screaming Eagles. O'Connor over the blue line. His shot. Saved by Campanella, and he holds on as O'Connor almost had goal number three there. O'Connor, nice shot from uh, the right faceoff circle. You know, just uh, here's O'Connor as we watch the replay, him coming in on a goal. That's a great shot. He's been able to pick the corner a couple of times tonight, but uh, Campanella just perfect positioning coming out to cut down the angle. Just a little bit before that, a couple of nice chances for Hutch Tech. You can just see, even when they're playing defense now, uh, and when they forecheck, they have their legs underneath them, and they're skating and stopping and starting with confidence and with reason. Buck out to the center ice area. Kept in there by Kelly. Kelly for McKinley dumps it in behind the net, and O'Connor will give chase. Battles along the boards with Wigdorski. Hutch Tech tries to clear, and they're finally able to get it out of their own zone. England battling along and tries to leave it for Algers. England and Algers for Hutch Tech, and Algers will set it in a big hit there. Coming over is O'Connor to nail Algers. Behind the net, Scheifele for McKinley. Knight makes a nice move to get past Inglet, and he passes it ahead now to Hurdle. So O'Connor, and O'Connor will give chase after Wigdorski. O'Connor and Wigdorski battle for the puck behind the net. Ahead it goes, Dominkowitz gives chase, but he can't get it. Dixie for McKinley, shot, deflected just wide of the net by Duke. Back to the point, Kelly can't keep it in, and skating back is Dixie for McKinley. Dixie. Ahead to O'Connor at center ice for McKinley. Nice pass ahead now, and Hurdle is taken off the puck by Wigdorski. Here come the engineers. Two on three, and Gorecki is taken off the puck. Back out to center ice, and Gorecki will get it once again for Hutch Tech. Gorecki has it intercepted by Hurdle, but then Gorecki gets it right back and sends it into the McKinley zone. 
Exactly 10 minutes remain, third period, 5-3 McKinley. This is Super Sunday, and it is the Explorer League final between these two teams. Buck along the blue line, left there, and coming up with it is McKinley. Moran can't get it, Dietrich has it for Hutch Tech. Over to Moran, Ryan Moran dumps it in, Chris Moran can't get it for McKinley. Ryan Moran dumps it over, and Gorecki sends it along the board. All the way down the ice, it'll be icing against Hutch Tech. 9.34 remaining, Hutch Tech trailing by two. And it's funny, you know, the first period, especially the first six minutes, were just all McKinley. They took the big lead. And since that goaltending change in the second period, Hutch Tech has really, I'd say, uh, skated evenly with McKinley, getting three goals, one of the uh, kind of sloppy variety. There have been a couple of opportunities right in front of the McKinley net during the entire game, maybe three or four, where the puck has bounced off a boot and almost gotten into the net. That's happened uh, a couple times. Scheifele, his shot from the point does not get through. Sobalski dumps it ahead. Oh, a clearing pass by Ginnick. Chris Moran can't put it home. He is wide open on the doorstep. Out to center ice they go. Chris Moran has it for McKinley. He'll send it back into his own zone, zone to his brother, Ryan. Ryan Moran. Pass out to center ice. Ginnick will dump it in. Giving chase now is Waskalevich for Hutch Tech. Sends it along the boards to Barry. Barry can't come up with it, though. Chris Moran has it. And now Ginnick will send it behind the net for McKinley. Hutch Tech will skate away with nine minutes remaining. They trail by two. Waskalevich out to center ice it goes. And it's intercepted there by Chris Moran. Along the boards, and Moran will just backhand it down into the Hutch Tech zone. Fred Ferry behind his own net. Sends it along the boards, and Dominkiewicz is able to get it out of his zone. But McKinley comes up with a loose puck. Chris Moran can't gain the blue line. And once again, Hutch Tech recovers. Waskalevich sends it back into his own zone. Brett Ferry goes over to get it for Hutch Tech. Behind his own net, sends it along the boards. Hutch Tech trails by two. Out to center ice it goes. Scheifele has it for McKinley. 8.25 remaining. Shot on. Steered away by Campanella. Fred Ferry. Cross ice pass almost intercepted by Chris Moran. Now Waskalevich has it for Hutch Tech. Sends it ahead. Dixie has it to O'Connor for McKinley. Kevin O'Connor. O'Connor poked away by Gorecki. Out to center ice. Dietrich has it. He sends it behind the net. Dixie comes over to get it for McKinley. And he will skate away. Dixie takes center ice. Now the blue line. And dumps it toward the net. Back out to an open wing. Boone can't come up with it for McKinley. Skating away is Tyrone. The center ice they go. Gorecki dumps it in. Dietrich can't come up with it for Hutch Tech. Tyrone, his backhand just goes wide. Now Hurdle for McKinley. Tries to dump it out. It's kept in. Oh, unable to keep it in for Hutch Tech, though, is their point, man. And he'll just send it across. And he'll dump it back in. Wigdorski dumps it in. Dickty sends it down the ice. And giving chase is Deep Pasquale. Deep Pasquale. Over it goes. Haven't seen much of him. Wigdorski has it now. Brian Wigdorski along the boards. And Hutch Tech will try to clear, and they will finally get it out to center ice. Back into the Hutch Tech zone. Sloppy play with 7-12 remaining. 5-3 McKinley. McKinley tries to skate away. They dump it down, and Wigdorski, Brian Wigdorski, sends it ahead. At the blue line, nice defensive play by Ryan Moran to intercept that play. Scheifler. Pat Scheifler skates away for McKinley. And he goes into the corner. The defenseman carries on. Scheifele behind the net. Looking for someone to pass to. And it's intercepted by Hutch Tech in front of their own net. The engineers trying to skate away out to center ice. It goes. And Boone will have it for McKinley. Boone to O'Connor. And O'Connor skates in. His shot. Nice defensive play that time by Mario DePasquale. Intercepting that opportunity by O'Connor. They battle along the boards. DePasquale tries to backhand it able to push it ahead and they'll send it out to center right haven't had a whistle in a long time here continuous action in the third period 5-3 McKinley Brian Wigdorski for Hutch Tech behind his own net he'll just slap it along the boards but not out to Minkowitz can't come up with it it's kept in by McKinley hurdle toward the net Campanella steers it wide Boone will go over and get it Boone just dumps it behind the net now it's England trying to come up with it gets his balance sends it along the boards and they battle along there. Dixie keeps it in for McKinley. Dixie once again at the point. Keeps it in. Nicely done. Dixie along the board. Skating in toward the net. Dixie behind the net. Tries to get it in front and nobody can come up with it. And they send it back down to center ice under six minutes to play. Algers tries to come up with it. Boone will go back and get it for McKinley with 5.38 remaining. Boone behind his own net. Sends it along the wing. No one can come up with it. It's back out to center ice. And Hutch Tech will take control there. Wigdorski 
sends it ahead. Chris Moran has it now for McKinley. Less than five and a half to play. McKinley leading by two. Here comes Chris Moran. He has it knocked off. Dietrich sends it into the corner. Chris Moran battles along the boards, though. He and Sobalski for McKinley. Chris Moran still has it. Tries to dump it in front. Cannot do so, but he still gives chase. The freshman, Chris Moran, still has the puck. Along the boards he goes. Content to just kill some clock here. His team leading by two. Now going back, Ginnick dumps his man down. They battle along the boards. Chris Moran and Ginnick for McKinley. Back there, Ivanko for Hutch Tech. Sends along the boards. Kept in by Dixie. Nice glove saved by Campanella. He holds on with 450 remaining. 5-3 McKinley. Wow, what a long period of play. You said it, Jay, without a whistle. Four to five minutes. Both teams taking uh, their advantages and taking their chances. 450 remaining. Now you're going to have to see Hutch Tech have probably one player hanging you know he's not going to come back and really play defense he's going to hang around the red line maybe even the opposing team's blue line will try to float up the pass to him and get a breakaway opportunity to at least get within one duke dumps it behind the net for mckinley giving chase in the corners of connor connor can't come up with the puck though and hutch tech able to get out of their own zone here comes directly captain for hutch tech carries on directly in toward the net shoots it wide dietrich goes over to get it for hutch tech he battles along the board Dietrich can't come up with the loose puck. Hurdle will skate away for McKinley. Under four, make it under five minutes to play. Here comes McKinley, and Duke is dug down. No call. And they'll just clear this puck down with Jorsky sends it down the ice. Icing again, Punch Tech with 4 12 remaining. 5 3. McKinley and when does Coach Westwall start thinking about pulling that goaltender around? Well, well 4 12 remaining. I think he's got to uh, wait at least till a minute and a half to go because this game has been so wide open. Here we look at a player being uh, hauled down. I thought there was a possible call on that, but at this point of the game, a referee's got it's got to be something blatant for a referee to call it. Uh, he would like to have the players decide it amongst themselves. You know, you were talking earlier about how uh, some of the players on Hutch Tech have the flu. Uh, Mario Di Pasquale, we've only seen him on the ice a couple of times today. You wonder if, uh, if some of their players weren't sick, weren't ill, would that be a one-goal differential here? Chris Moran comes back for McKinley. Carries on. He'll just be content to take it to the corner and kill some clock. Moran and Sabolski have been cycling throughout the night. They dump it in front of the net. Back to the point. Ryan Moran, his slap shot. Big save by Campanella. And he's trying to hold on. And finally, we have ourselves a whistle, and we have bodies flying all over the place, and an injured McKinley player as Hutch Tech trying to defend their own goal. They buried one of the McKinley players, and he is still down on the ice. And that's what happens so often when you get a scrum like that in front of the net. Somebody gets hurt, not from the puck, not from the play, but from all the bodies banging back and forth inside. You know, you roll over, it looks like he's uh, holding his upper body right now. It looks like it could be a shoulder. Is that Chris Moran? Looks like his uh, left shoulder. We'll try to get it on the replay here, but he is in obvious pain. Ginnick and Waskalevich will go to the box with coincidental penalties with 3.44 remaining, but Chris Moran still down on the ice. He got twisted around. Yeah, what happened was after the save, he got twisted around and just flung to the ice by the uh, Hutch Tech player, and it looks like he just went into the ice shoulder first and bang. Uh, you've seen separated shoulders and sprained shoulders. That looks like it could be that type of injury. He is still on the ice. They are still attending to him, as you can see right now. Obvious pain. There are penalties on the play. Ginnick and Waskalevich will go into the box for the respective teams. Waskalevich for Hutch Tech. Ginnick for McKinley. And if I'm not mistaken, it's only the third penalty third penalty second and third penalties of this contest absolutely these two teams that we were saying earlier uh, they are uh, friendly with the penalty box and the timekeepers but uh, since uh, early in the game we had one power play and this won't even result in a power play uh, they'll get coincidental two and two but that's a, a scary play anytime you get a scrum like that in front of the net this one was uh, is an intentional throw down to, to the ice by the Hutch Tech player uh, and obviously now that if you look at this again now watch he grabs him he'll just fling him around he'll be pulled almost off his skates right around there's one there's two the french judge i don't know if she's going to give it a five nine but he goes right to the ice and just out of the frame there bam the shoulder hits oh. the ground and that's a scary situation and that's unfortunate for mckinley chris moran has been one of their better players the freshman his uh father is one of the coaches there's chris look at those uh, stats for the freshman but his father bill moran who played at mckinley one of the assistant coaches here 
very proud of his uh, son's place as Chris is the most serious of the three hockey playing brothers. And Chris will go to the locker room, unfortunately, and the play-ins are later this week. Right. McKinley trying to, will be battling for seeding in the state championships. And when you look at injuries, uh, shoulder injuries right now over the past decade have been the most common hockey injury. A lot of people would think it'd be something with the ankle or the legs. It's shoulder injuries going into the boards, going into the ice. And McKinley starting to turn up the heat here. They come in on goal, and Campanella with another big save. He's done it again, time and time again. He's kept him in the game. That time he said, stops Tim Felshow, and the bodies are flying everywhere. Here comes McKinley. Felshow trying to get on net. His shot opportunity slapped away by Campanella. Boone battling along the boards. And Hutch Tech will try to clear, and they finally do. Here come the engineers. That's what Dorsky carrying on, leaves it behind, and uh, McKinley able to come up with it three minutes remaining. McKinley leading 5-3 here in the third period. This is Super Sunday, the Explorer League final. They'll dump it all the way down. It will be icing against McKinley with 2.56 remaining. I'm a little surprised they called that icing because the uh, Hutch Tech defender, Dietrich, really didn't try too hard to get back there and get the puck. Although uh, it was going to be a race between the two, and the reason they do that quick icing call is so that they don't have injuries with two players going after the puck. Let's watch this in front now. There's a great opportunity. Campanelli. Uh, Campanella, how many saves has he made like that since he came in the second period? At least 10 point-blank saves or saves that were screened. Much tech. Coming back with the puck. They lose it. Duke comes up with it. Sends it toward the net. Right on the doorstep. Shot Another save. One. Oh, Campanella robs Hurdle right on the doorstep. Hutch Tech finally able to clear their zone. They trail 5-3. And if I'm not mistaken, Hutch Tech still yet to get a shot on in this period. McKinley, they send it in. That's Ryan Moran. Shot right on. Campanella steers it. O'Connor toward the net. Duke can't put it home. He goes over the top of the net. We're going to get a penalty on the play. After the puck went into the corner, we are going to get an elbowing call. And uh, we'll see what's going to happen. It looks like Hutch Check is going into the penalty box. This is not what they needed. Down by two goals with 2.19 remaining. McKinley going on the power play. Look at this opportunity. I should say the opportunity by uh, Hurdle there, just over the top of the net. They could not put it home. But Campanella has done the job for Hutch Check. Has kept him in this game, but with 2.19 remaining. And now playing shorthanded for the next two minutes. Uh, the engineers will be up against it, trying to pull off a miracle. Adam Wigdorski in the penalty box for Hutch Tech. Puck sent down to the McKinley zone. Scheifele will give chase for McKinley. Scheifele battling along the boards. Can't come up with it. And Dietrich has it for Hutch Tech. Now Scheifele takes it right back from him. At Scheifele, junior defenseman. Stands at 6'4", 175. And Coach Klein says that Scheifele has a bright future in college hockey put on some pounds in the offseason and he's going to be a force to contend with next year in the explorer. He already is. Scheifler behind his own net sends it all the way down the ice. They will get called for icing with 140 remaining a 5-3 lead. For a second there I thought that Scheifler might have thought his team was shorthanded instead. They are actually on the power play and they'll get called for the icing. So they'll bring the puck all the way down into the McKinley zone, an opportunity here for the engineer. That's such a strange thing to do. Jay and I both looked at each other and said, which team is on the power play here? <laughs> well, you look at it, they're up by two, 140. If they're bottled up in the zone, just get it down the ice, start over. They believe in their defense, they believe in their face-off abilities, even though they just lost this one. Shot by Dietrich is stopped by the sliding defenseman, Scheifler. Here come the Hutch Tech. Screaming Eagles, and if I'm not mistaken, is that Chris Moran that's skating along there? Yes, that is. is Chris Moran back on the ice. Good to see the freshman back out there for McKinley. 119 remains, 5-3 McKinley. Hutch Tech trying to kill off penalty and get back into the game at the same time. Ryan Moran, his shot right on. Campanella steers it away. O'Connor has it for McKinley. Shot just through the goal crease. Now over to the near side. Hurdle dumps it behind to Chris Moran. Moran battling along for the puck. Now he has a stick knocked away by Wigdorski. Behind the net it goes. O'Connor sends it back over to Chris Moran. 53 seconds remain. 5-3 McKinley. And McKinley trying to add to that margin. Shot! Saved by Campanella. Moran skates out in front of the net. Campanella can't find the puck and it is behind him. It's in the net. Chris Moran puts it home and that will just about ice it for McKinley. 42.8 seconds remaining. McKinley 6 Hutch Tech 3. Well, you can't ask Aaron Campanella to play any better goal than he has this afternoon. 
He must have stopped 10 or 15 point blank opportunities and a lot of rebounds. And finally, Chris Moran put one past him. As uh, we look at the replay in just a few seconds here, the puck is going to come out from behind the net. Here we go. Chris Moran, who just came back from the ice, uh, or from the locker room with a shoulder injury, gets his own little rebound after trying to dump it in front, puts it away, goes top shelf, and 6 3 now with 42.8 seconds remaining. McKinley, you can safely say, I think we think is on their way to an Explorer League title. The two in a row for McKinley and what five out of the last six if I'm not mistaken for McKinley and uh, well done by Coach Klein's team. I was talking to him before the game and he was saying how uh, not last year but the year before he decided he could have to take his lumps with some underclassmen right. but those underclassmen grew up pretty quick over the last two years and have provided him with two Explorer League championships. Good coaches know how to do that. They, they, they they're realistic where they say, okay, we may not be good this year, but we may not be great this year. But if we just stay good the next couple of years, we're going to be all set. And as long as he communicates that to the players, hey, we're going to lose a couple of games this year, guys, but stick around. The next couple of years are going to be wonderful. That's the way good coaches keep programs going, like McKinley, like Hutch Tech. That's why they've been here. It seems like every year they have the tournament. I just saw a shot of uh, Coach Klein on the bench, not wearing his uh, jacket and tie. He says, hey. Wearing the casual has gotten me here this far. Why should I change just because we're in the final? Hutch Tech trailing by three. They dump it in the McKinley zone. McKinley, that's Ryan Moran, sends it around the boards and out to center ice. Back they come. Waskalevich gives chase. Waskalevich will go back behind his own net to claim the puck for Hutch Tech. Boone battling along with him behind the net. 20 seconds remain. It's going to be McKinley to finish off Super Sunday. They battle along behind the net. And the referee might be well served to take charge and call a penalty. He chooses not to. Ten seconds remain. Dominkowitz can't get it out. Now they'll send it back down the ice. Ryan Moran will skate back into his own zone. Set it behind the net. And McKinley will claim their second consecutive Explorer League title on Super Sunday. Beating Hutch Tech today 6-3. to three. Well, for both these teams today, the excitement of playing their final game at HSBC Arena. The fans who came out, wonderful to watch. I know some of the kids, when they came out for the uh, opening ceremonies and the skate around, they were having problems concentrating. They're at the arena. Man, the Sabres play here. They're heroes. 18,000 people fill this place. And whether you win or lose, they have had a great day here at Super Sunday. A little bit better there, though, for McKinley. Congratulations to the Screaming Eagles of McKinley and Coach Bill Klein, their second consecutive Explorer League title on Super Sunday and also congratulations as well to Coach Westfall and his Hutch Tech engineers who battled valiantly trailing 5-1 got back into the game I made it 5-3 very interesting in the third period but McKinley finishes it off with a goal by Chris Moran at 14-17 to provide the 6-3 margin yeah the score early for uh, McKinley uh, Kevin O'Connor he was just too much he got behind the Hutch Tech defense early again Hutch Tech playing with 13 new faces that showed up in the first period. The O'Connor speed was too much. He's my choice for star of the game. I don't know which way it's going to go, but uh, he's my choice for star of the game. And Kevin O'Connor was outstanding, Thanks, as were Thanks, several Thanks, of Drew. the Screaming Eagles. You could uh, claim several of the, uh, of the players for sure. 6-3 the final here as McKinley continues to celebrate. Well, we finally have a Mark Jagger sighting down on the ice. Mark Jagger with our player of the game, and that is goaltender for Hutch Tech, Aaron Campanella. I'm here with Aaron Campanella, the star of the game. The goaltender who came in as the replacement only gave up one late goal, I believe, on the power play. And uh, Aaron, talk a little bit about uh, your performance and your team for the season. Well, uh, we worked real hard to get here. Nobody thought we could make it. Everybody thought we lost too many people last year, and uh, uh, we came in here, we gave it 100%. Okay, uh, looking forward to next year. Do you have any more eligibility? Uh, I'm a senior this year. It's my last year playing for Tech. Um, I'm probably going to go play hockey somewhere like a, like maybe UB. I'll try out for them if I get into the school. Well, good luck to you. A fine performance in relief. And now joining me, Bill Klein, the uh, winning coach for McKinley, and we're told back-to-back -to -back championships five in the last six years and uh, Bill hindsight 2020 the uh, goaltender coming in he really did a fine job in relief had he started one might think it might have been a different game we might still be playing like previous Hutch Tech McKinley games with the overtime he played an excellent game talk about the uh, the third period and, and what the strategy was coming in 
The strategy coming into the third period was to take the neutral zone away from them, smother them, and keep them out of our end and just keep the clock running. Thanks, Bill. I'll let you get back to your team and congratulations. Thanks, Mark. Now back up to uh, Jay and Rob. Well, thank you very much, Mark Jaggard. Uh, entertaining third period. Actually, a pretty entertaining game. It looked like it was going to be a blowout for McKinley in this one. But Hutch Tech, give them a lot of credit. They battled back. They showed a lot of heart. We talked about the 13 new players they had, the, the 13 freshmen. Uh, they've got a very good future. McKinley, though, better talent. Not necessarily a better coach team. Both coaches did an outstanding job preparing their teams. And how about the goaltending of uh, Aaron Campanella? He almost got Hutch Tech back into the game single-handedly. He was pulled, uh, or rather inserted into the game halfway through in place of uh, Justin Tata, who had given up five goals. Campanella kept McKinley at bay until the last minute of play when Chris Moran scored the clincher to make it 6-3. to three. Two goals and one assist for Kevin O'Connor for McKinley to lead the offense for the Screaming Eagles. So the Screaming Eagles with two consecutive Super Sunday titles. So well done for Bill Klein's team. Do, do we pencil it in for next year? The same two teams? <laughs> same, Maybe not the same place, but it seems this way. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's 10 straight get, uh, appearances for Hutch Tech, 9 of the last 10 for McKinley. It's been a pleasure being with you, Rob Lucas. Well done. Also, Mark Jagger. It was nice to see him down on the ice as well. I'm Jay Moran. Thank you very much for joining us for the uh, Super Sunday Explorer League Final. Once again, McKinley beating Hutch Tech for their second consecutive title. This is Adelphia 13's Blades of Fire.